Heron's formula is a formula that tells you the area of a triangle in terms of the sides. So you don't need to know any angles or anything. You just need to know the three sides. So here I have a triangle with the usual uh, labeling conventions. A is matched up on the opposite with little a and big B matched with little b and c matched opposite with little c. So I recommend you always label your triangles like this. It will make things a lot easier to follow. And the area, Heron's formula tells us the area with this beautiful formula. Watch this. P minus a, P minus b, P minus c, and the whole thing under a square root and this p thing is the semi perimeter so i take the sum a plus b plus c and divide by two it's the perimeter a plus b plus c and then divided by two what a beautiful formula it has this incredible symmetry to it uh it looks like something that's maybe hard to prove and yeah it uh it's a little bit challenging to prove so uh, there are various ways to prove it. Proofs. Okay, let's let's just mention a few proofs. There's the classical way, uh, which we are going to do, and it involves a lot of algebra and Pythagoras law, but nothing else. There's nothing really uh, special about this technique of proof, but it's a really good uh, problem. And uh, everyone has to know it. I mean, literally everyone has to know this proof. If you are especially a competitor doing tests and uh, exams and Olympiads and all that, well, you should know this proof. There's also a technique of proof using X circles, which uh, uh, I will explain uh, in a future video. It's a very beautiful idea. Then there's this cotangent identity proof, which is really spectacular, and I hope to show that to you one day. Um, but the classical proof, this is the one we're going to talk about now. But before I begin this proof, I want to just show you something kind of interesting. Suppose I bring this big point A down here, and my triangle now is a degenerate, and it becomes just a line. Uh, okay, so this, this distance is then C, and this distance will be B. So A is B plus C, like this, okay? And the perimeter of the whole thing, P, is just 2A. And so if we look in this formula here, P minus A, that's a, well, not really. Let's think about it more carefully. The semi-perimeter, P, is actually 2A. The perimeter is 2A over 2, and that's A. Okay, and so this actually, this factor here is greater than 0 because B is smaller than A. This is greater than 0 because C is smaller than uh, P, the semi-perimeter, but P minus A, this is exactly equal to zero because P is A. The perimeter is 2A, but the semi-perimeter is 2A divided by 2. Uh, you know, now I think about it, maybe I should have used a different symbol for semi-perimeter, but a lot of my books actually uses P, little p as semi-perimeter. Okay, so I'll just use little p, just have to, have to be careful. So we're going to employ a strategy, and our strategy is going to be like this. We will express all the intermediate quantities. We will have a few of them, uh, well, two of them, uh, in terms of the sides, A, B, C. So everything is going to be expressed step by step in terms of the sides, A, B, C. Now, uh, there are many, many presentations of this proof, but maybe mine will be a little bit different in the sense that I have broken it down for you in uh, steps that are very easy to follow and to understand. So let's start. I will drop here a perpendicular line from A to D. So this is, 
Well, I should use some color there. Let's use color. This is a perpendicular line. H is perpendicular. And let's break up side little a from B to C, big B to big C. Let's break that up into X and A minus X. And as I said, uh, let's mm, break up the proof into easy to digest steps. This, the first step is to express we have to express x in terms of a, b, c. Just, just as we say with our strategic goal here of expressing everything in terms of a, b, c. There are two triangles, two right angle triangles inside the big triangle. Let's look at the smaller one, triangle a, b, d. And th what does triangle a, b, d tell us? Well, c squared is x squared plus h squared. c squared is x squared plus h squared. We apply Pythagoras. Now the other triangle is a triangle a c d, and what does that tell us? b squared is uh, a minus x squared plus h squared. So if I have um, labeled them, let's say two and one, and I do two minus one, what happens here? Well. I got b squared minus c squared equals, now let's expand all of this. I'll write it here. a squared minus, or a squared plus x squared minus 2ax plus h squared minus x squared minus h squared. Yeah, very good. Okay, so that, that looks good so far because I can cancel out some stuff here, here here and and now what do i have now b squared minus c squared is a squared minus 2ax very good and from this from this i can now calculate x find x and how do i do that well i have to move things around Let's see if I can get this right. So I'm, I'll move this to the left. 2ax is a squared minus b squared plus c squared. And that gives me x equals a squared minus b squared plus c squared over 2a. How does that look? It's very nice. Let's get some color highlight this so that's step one done so i'm i'm doing my strategy i'm expressing unknown quantities i have some unknown quantities here x and h i'm going to try to express them all in terms of the sides a b c very good so that's step one step two is just a lot of algebra we want to find h squared in terms of a b and c we can do that here h squared is c squared minus x squared, and then we can apply a lot of interesting algebra. h squared is c squared minus x squared. Well, this can be factored c plus x times, uh, let's write it better, c minus x. Now let's plug in this equation we got for x. We have c plus a squared minus b squared plus c squared over 2a and and the other factor c minus the whole thing for x. Now I can bring both to uh, the same denominator. This was just algebra. Just be careful about these signs here when you put everything over the common denominator. Now let me factor out this uh, 1 over 2a here. Let's make this simpler. We get a 1 over 4a squared coming out into the front. Now let's look at this carefully. This, this a and the c, this is actually a square. And so this is a difference of two squares, 4a squared. And here I have a difference of two squares. Watch, I have a plus c all squared. And then there's the minus b left over, minus b squared left over. Now here it requires just a bit more thought because this 
this and this well there's some negative signs that's a bit confusing so let's think about this if i expand this i end up with a squared minus or plus c squared minus 2ac and then the minus in front gives me the correct signage for uh the uh, all of these terms so i have here b squared minus a minus c squared here and this is my h squared but i can go a little farther than this okay watch this one over four a squared these are differences of squares here this and this is a difference of squares so because difference of squares i can i can now factor x minus y times or x plus y x minus y bit by bit okay so i have a plus c plus b that's the first factor for this one and then a plus c minus b that's the second factor for this one and then here mm, i have b minus be careful about uh, the signs b plus a minus c and then finally b minus a plus c be careful about the signs very nice very nice you uh this is uh the expression that we want so we're done with that step in step three we introduce the semi-perimeter p p is a plus b plus c over two as we mentioned before but we can look at it from this point of view a a plus 2p is a plus b plus c all right, and let's do something interesting here. If I subtract 2a from this, then I have a, a minus 2a here, and I'll end up with minus a plus b plus c, right? And if I keep going, 2p minus 2b, I get a minus b plus c, and 2p minus 2c, this gives me likewise there but we we want all of this these are all the same expressions here so now i can write h squared equals 1 over 4 a squared and here is 2p that's this one now the next one uh this is 2p minus 2b here and then the next one this is 2p minus 2c, and then this one is 2p minus 2a. And we can clean this up. Let's take out all the twos. We have 16 over 4a squared, and then p, and I'll rearrange it in alphabetical order, p minus a, p minus b, p minus c. So we're very close. We and so this now becomes a beautiful expression for h squared p p minus a p minus b p minus c very nice and we will use this in the last step coming up next the last step step four is to calculate the area remember my triangle something like this now i have a perpendicular h here and this is side a so my area area is one half h times a base height times base so uh let's compute this area let's compute area squared that is actually uh, a, a bit easier to do. 1 over 4 h squared a squared. That's because I have h squared. And I have, look at this, I have a 1 over 4 here and an a squared. That's exactly what's going to cancel out. Isn't that beautiful? So <laughs> I, have, I have 1 over 4 a squared. Now let's plug in all of this for h squared. Okay, so we have 4 <laughs> over a squared. It's so beautiful how this all magically works out p minus b p minus c okay very nice let's see let's see what goes on now 
this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and I'm left with this beautiful expression, P minus A, P minus B, P minus C. That's the area squared. And so finally, I have area equals the square root of P, P minus A, P minus B, P minus C. There. So I think that my way of explaining this is, you know, it's not different really in principle from all the other classic uh, proofs of Heron's formula, but I kind of broke it up into steps that you can understand. Uh, because sometimes I think that this proof can be really hard to follow if all of the algebra is thrown at you in one shot. So break it into four steps, like I've done here. And after you've watched this video, put the video away, take some paper, and do the whole thing out by yourself. So let, let's, let's do some exercises now. So the first exercise that I recommend for you is do it, do it without looking. So do it cold. Cold means like no notes, no preparation, just paper and pencil, and no computer. Uh, you just do it all out of your head. Draw a triangle, label it, and start working on it. Do the four steps, come up with the proof, and do it several times. Now, just for fun, uh, what happens, uh, just an easy exercise, okay? What happens if you have an isosceles, isosceles triangle? So in this case, uh, with an iso triangle, two sides, are the same. So we have B and B and one side is A. Okay, so when two sides are the same, use Heron formula to find area. I'm sure you already know the formula for the uh, area of an isosceles triangle, but, but do it by Heron's formula. It's interesting. And three, I'll do three on the side here. What if you have a completely iso, iso uh, like a completely equilateral triangle, A, 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 like this. So when you have equilateral, there's a famous formula for the area, but find it by, by Heron, okay? Use Heron to find area. Of course, it's overkill. You could just memorize those uh, formulas. There's easier way to derive those formulas. But it's very interesting to do it by Heron. You should try it. It's really very interesting. Well, I hope you liked this video. Uh, this was the classic proof, and it was very fun. I like all the symmetry and all the algebra. So please like and subscribe. And uh, I will see you next time.